What is up guys, Nick Hernandez back here with another episode of NHTV. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about the LG Nexus 5X. This is one of two phones released by Google earlier in October and I want to see if it actually lives up to the hype and brings some of that Nexus flair to the new lineup. So without further ado, let's take a look. The 5X features an all plastic construction, is very lightweight and soft to the touch on the back. On the right hand side you've got a power button and volume rocker that are very easy to reach. On the top you've got nothing but a microphone. On the bottom you've got a USB Type-C connector and a 3.5mm headphone jack. And on the right hand side you have your SIM tray so you can be able to put a nano SIM inside of there. It's very lightweight and because of that you are able to reach every side and the screen is not that large so it's very good for one handed use. The 5X comes with a 5.2 inch LCD 1080p display that shows nice details with over 400 ppi but lacks in saturation that other comparable LCD panels in the realm of HTC and Apple have. Colors can feel washed out at times and viewing angles are for the most part subpar. The screen is not all bad as it is able to get bright enough for outdoor visibility and dim enough for dark room situations. The front firing speaker located on the bottom is not the best but it is better than normal bottom or rear mounted speakers found on other smartphones. It definitely helps for watching YouTube videos or movies or watching trailers as this one. Tune in and hear how it sounds. Just went and made a new dinosaur. Probably not a good idea. Almost 40 feet high. Really think she climbed out. Depends on what. What kind of dinosaur they cooked up in that lab. Moving on from the screen and the speaker, let's talk about this camera. It's been touted as the best ever made by Google, and it has a 12.3 megapixel Sony sensor with a 1.55 micron pixel size, laser autofocus, and dual LED flash. The 5X also features a 5 megapixel front facing camera, and for the most part it's like any other selfie camera. The camera interface has a simple point and shoot navigation, and comes with features like panorama and photosphere. Autofocus is quick to focus, and the camera is able to shoot 4K video and up to 720p 120 frames per second slow-mo video. This camera produces some of the best shots that I've ever seen out of an Android camera. Colors are nice and vibrant, HDR always does a great job of keeping things balanced, and there's always the right amount of post-processing. This camera is able to capture a great shot on the first snap almost every time. Low light photography is great as well since the larger pixel size helps bring in more light. The time in between shots is not the fastest in the market, but this does not necessarily matter considering you're going to take a great shot on the first try almost every time. Moving on to video quality, this shot was taken at 1080p. There is no OIS, so laser autofocus has to help balance out the shot. It does an okay job, but it's not the best. It's not on the likes of the iPhone 6S or even the LG V10, but it does a good job for what it has. Underneath the camera, the 5X comes with a fingerprint scanner called Nexus Imprint. Google states that it takes under 600 milliseconds to recognize the fingerprint, and I would agree. It's very fast and reliable. I rarely have any misreads when I use it, and although you can't really use it when it's lying flat on a surface, all you gotta do is pick it up and you don't have to press the power button to turn it on. It's very convenient and a very great feature for this phone. In the performance department, the 5X is powered by a Snapdragon 808 processor with 2GB of RAM and an Adreno 418 GPU. This chipset is a hexa-core processor that has 4 cores for lower tasks and 2 cores for more extensive tasks. Everyday navigation is a breeze with little to no lag between apps. More extensive apps show the only 2GB of RAM though, as those apps tend to take longer to load up and can sometimes cause the phone to freeze. An extra gigabyte of RAM could have really helped the phone in that department, but I'm guessing was left out due to cost cutting. Games once running play without a hitch, and rarely do I find the phone to be getting hot while playing the game. Frames don't drop rarely, and for the most part it looks really good when you're playing. It's a nice balance of performance here, but from the Nexus it's a little disappointing considering that the 6P is so fast and so fluid, and there's other phones in the market that have that fluidity with the 3GB of RAM. The 5X was made with the latest and greatest in Google's lineup in mind. Running on stock Marshmallow 6.0, some of the new features include Google Now and Tap, Android Pay, and Doze. Stock Android is the cleanest and most fluid Android software in the market, with none of the bloatware that you get from the carrier, or none of the bloatware that you get from the manufacturers like Samsung or LG. Google Now and Tap works well. A long press of the home button allows your phone to scan your screen for relevant information and tries to bring you that relevant information through either a Google search or through a social media page like Instagram or Facebook. 50% of the time this works well and you are able to get some relevant information. The other 50% of the time it doesn't work at all and you get nothing. This is to be forgiven with new software and with future updates it could get much better. Android Pay is much more reliable. It's simple and easy to use and very secure. It allows you to pay for goods and services at places that have NFC terminals and it works with your fingerprint scanner for extra security. There are two last things I want to mention with Android Marshmallow. The first
First is app permissions. You can now control which apps use certain features on your phone. For example, I can control whether the Chrome web browser is able to use my camera or my dialer on my phone. The feature I want to talk about next is Doze. Doze is probably one of my favorite features and is a true highlight to Android Marshmallow. It allows your phone to save battery by optimizing apps to put them in a standby mode when not using them for a long period of time. And it also allows for your phone to go into a deep sleep when it is not used over a long period of time and it's face down. I found this very useful when sitting in a classroom and not being able to use my phone. Over a three hour period, I was losing less than 5% of battery when Doze was activated, which can really prolong your battery life. Speaking of battery life, the 5X comes with a 2700 milliamp hour battery. With the optimizations of software and the lesser pixel that's 1080p display, battery life is great on the 5X. I've never had an issue going the full day, and I normally have about two to two and a half hours of screen on time with about an hour of phone calls, or my guess is I can get about three to three and a half hours of pure screen on time, which is great. If for some reason your battery runs low throughout the day, the 5X is equipped with quick charge technology through the USB Type-C connector and allows for around 50% or more of battery life within 30 to 45 minutes of charging. So you'll never run into any battery issues with this phone. 5X is equipped with either 16 gigabytes of storage or 32 gigabytes of storage and costs either 379 or 429. Currently, I'm testing out the 16 gigabyte of storage and since there's no micro SD card support, I only have four gigabytes left on this phone to be able to use. So for the future and the long-term option for most people, the 32 gigabyte option is gonna be better even if you have to spend more money. You're gonna be able to save more photos and be able to save more things onto your phone and not have to worry about moving into the cloud or offloading some of your photos onto your computer. To wrap things up, the 5X is a great smartphone with only a few hiccups along the way. The camera, battery life, and software all make this a great buy for the price. While the screen, performance issues with more intensive tasks, and lack of larger memory make it a not so great buy. In this scenario, the pros outweigh the cons, and I would definitely recommend this smartphone for those who want a smaller form factor and want to have the latest and greatest that Android has to offer. If you have a little more to spend though, it is possible that a phone like the Motorola Moto X Pure could be a great buy for you, but you don't get the same camera or fingerprint scanner. If you don't mind a bigger form factor, then I definitely recommend the Nexus 6P, which is a fantastic smartphone for the price. Stay tuned for my future Nexus 6P review that should be coming in the near future. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Nick Hearn TV. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for all my future content. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.